Thunder. Let's get into it. Thor, Love and Thunder. Thor, Love and Thunder. This is the fourth movie in the Thor franchise. Basically, another movie added to the MCU and it's a coming of age movie where Thor, he takes on the challenge of redefining his inner peace because really, after Endgame, he put on all that weight and the movie does a good job at explaining everything that he has to deal with after losing so much. He lost Jane Foster, his girlfriend, his one true love. He lost his mother and he lost his father and then he lost his brother again and again and again. The movie focuses on everything that is lost, which explains him trying to move on from all that. It comes to a point where he is starting to move on. He's with the Guardians of the Galaxy. And then, you know, he starts parting way with them and, you know, moving on. And then all of a sudden, bam, Jane Foster appears. And then, bam, she's like, woman Thor. And he's just like, whoa, like got hit by a truck. Like, what the hell's going on? And on top of that, later on, he finds out that she is sick with cancer and she's like pretty much dying. So at first I thought Mjolnir was actually healing her, you know, giving her that power to be Thor was giving, making her stronger. But it turns out much later on in the movie that it's doing the exact opposite of what we thought. It's actually using all of her life energy. So in fact, it's actually draining her much more. Then he has to fight the super villain, which has his own grudge against all these gods. Gore, the god Budra basically, he got screwed over by a god at the beginning. And then now he's on a mission and he's got that sword that, you know, they say that corrupts him. So he's on a mission to kill all the gods because he got screwed over by one god. Well, <laughs> he kidnaps the children basically to create a trap to get Stormbreaker. And then once he obtains Stormbreaker, he uses Stormbreaker to open up to eternity. And in between that, you know, you've got Thor, you got Jane Foster. They're having their relationship. They're going to fight him. Natalie Portman, Jane Foster, she gets badly injured and so does Valkyrie. You know, she's now the new queen of Asgard. And then you've got Korg that follows him on, on the journey. But look, overall, plot-wise, it was pretty, it was all right. It wasn't too bad. It kind of felt a little rushed, in my opinion. There were some really good points made in the movie that they could have explored on a little bit more deeper. So it felt like they were just, you know, cramming a lot of stuff in and connecting the dots. One thing was happening at one moment, then the next moment something else was happening. And I do get it. There's a lot that's going on in this movie. Two and a half hours. They had half an hour. Usually two and a half hours is a long movie, right? But there are still plenty of movies that are two and a half hours long, which means, you know, they could have had an extra half an hour to, you know, blend the characters, really flesh out each idea and really explore upon them a bit more. You know, this is a Marvel film, a big budget production. So surely an extra half an hour to actually, you know, develop the story a lot more develop the characters a lot more wouldn't be too much. Throughout the film, we have a few brief appearances by some characters, which you may know of. Like first of which, you know, Jane Foster's friend, Darcy Lewis, right? Who appeared in both the first two Thor movies and then also had an appearance in the WandaVision series as well. We also had Heimdall, which appeared in the post credit scene where Jane Foster appears to go to Valhalla. Then you see Heimdall welcoming her to Valhalla. And then you also see Lady Sif. You know, she makes a brief appearance there when Thor goes to see where, what's going on and Gore, the god butcher, you know, attacked that planet and you see her, you got one arm less than what she had. So another interesting thing to talk about is the fact that they introduced the character Zeus. I actually made an appearance in the movie. Because at first when they mentioned him, I thought it was just going to be like a, a name mention, you know, of the character Zeus and going to talk about it. But he actually appeared. I'm like, oh, cool. Who are they going to get to play Zeus? And they got none other than Russell Crowe himself. Zeus is supposed to be, you know, all good and respectable. They portrayed him as like not really likable, a bit arrogant, snarky, which I was like, oh, interesting. You know, that, that's the portrayal that they wanted to go towards. Obviously Thor and that, you know, wanted to get that lightning bolt and they can't just make it too easy, so. <laughs> So we've got two post credit scenes. One of them was the one that I already mentioned. And then the other one turns out, surprise, surprise, Zeus didn't end up dying. You know, he got struck by a lightning bolt through his heart and he fell. Turns out, oh, you know, he doesn't like Thor. So then he calls on none other than his son, Hercules himself, which you actually get a glimpse of who's playing Hercules, which potentially setting up another sequel, which then would mean Chris Hemsworth himself could potentially be in the running for playing the longest superhero, if I'm not mistaken. 
I did hear that somewhere. Don't quote me on that, but each of the original MCU characters, Iron Man, Captain America, they all had three movies. Thor was the only one that had four movies so far, and the end credit scenes confirmed that he's getting a fifth movie because in all post credit scene fashion, there was some text that said, Thor will return. So if that doesn't confirm another Thor movie, I don't know what does. But then again, things can happen and, you know, meetings can happen and decisions happen and Marvel themselves could just turn out and be like, no, nah, we're canceling for whatever reason. But I doubt that's going to happen. But anything can happen at the end of the day. We're getting back on track. So the movie itself, was it a good movie? Is it worth seeing? You know what? Like, it's not a completely bad movie. There's some completely bad movies where I'm like, well, maybe, you know, don't waste too much time with that particular movie. With this movie, I would say that it's pretty good. I really enjoyed it. You know, um, for the most part, it's a pretty good movie. It's not bad by any means. Overall, like it's just a superhero movie. And if you're a fan of, you know, Thor, then definitely go check this out. If you're just someone that's casual, not really into superhero, not really into the MCU. I don't know, that's not the biggest deal if you miss this movie. I'm still yet to watch Thor number two. I just never got around to watching that. I don't know why, but then people are saying it's probably one of the weaker Thor movies. So like, then again, my keenness to watch that movie doesn't really go up that much. So I may, I may not watch it, but you know, comment down below if you really want me to watch it and just tell you guys what I think about it. But some of you might be wondering, is this movie, does this movie compare to Thor Ragnarok? You know, the previous entry is the franchise. But at the end of the day, if I had to pick, I'd say Thor Ragnarok, probably a bit more funnier on the comedic side. That's what I thought. Um, other than that, both movies were directed by Taika Waititi and you can definitely see that the style has pretty much stayed the same. It's just obviously the story aspect elements, the plot's all different. The only thing some people may want to pick at is the fact that the way it ends, you kind of understand that, yes, as a result of Jane Foster dying, right, Thor is trying to find a new purpose for himself. You know, what is he going to do with himself? So, Gore the God Butcherer basically brings back his daughter and then dies, where he could have just joined her in Valhalla and, you know, lived happily ever after, but he decided to bring her back and, you know, kill himself. So, then he leaves Thor the responsibility of raising her up, which it's like, well, you know, you can understand that, you know, he's trying to redefine the purpose, that's the point of the story. But, you know, raising up a somewhat like a villain's kid, you know, I mean, kind of a little weird, but not the most weirdest thing I've seen. <laughs> but look, some people may want to complain about that. Some people were like, well, no, that's cool. So I don't know where I stand on that. But funnily enough, like there's this meme, God, the God Butcherer was played by Christian Bale. He's a terrific actor. It's just the fact that, you know, Christian Bale plays a villain and then he also used to play Batman, you know, a superhero. And it's like, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. Turns out, Christian Bauer lived long enough to see himself become the villain. But other than that, look guys, if you enjoyed the video, please smack the like button, comment something, comment your thoughts down below. I will see you guys in the next video. Stay safe, stay strong, and see you then. You still have the humor, the comedy elements there. <laughs> Both movies are directed by Taika Waititi, so... um. said Titi, it's Taika Waititi. That's what I said. Yeah, he, he said that, what? Uh, it's it's the way he said it. Yeah, he said it. With Titi. I just said Taika Waititi. Yeah, yeah, Titi. Titi. You know, they both have similar start.